Numbers 8. The Lord said to Moses, Speak to Aaron and say to him, When you set up the lamps, see that all seven light up the area in front of the lampstand. Aaron did so. He set up the lamps so that they faced forward on the lampstand just as the Lord commanded Moses. This is how the lampstand was made. It was made of hammered gold, from its base to its blossoms. The lampstand was made exactly like the pattern the Lord had shown Moses. The Lord said to Moses, Take the Levites from among all the Israelites and make them ceremonially clean. To purify them, do this. Sprinkle the water of cleansing on them, then have them shave their whole bodies and wash their clothes. And so they will purify themselves. Have them take a young bull with its grain offering of the finest flour mixed with olive oil. Then you are to take a second young bull for a sin offering. Bring the Levites to the front of the tent of meeting and assemble the whole Israelite community. You are to bring the Levites before the Lord, and the Israelites are to lay their hands on them. Aaron is to present the Levites before the Lord as a wave offering from the Israelites, so that they may be ready to do the work of the Lord. Then the Levites are to lay their hands on the heads of the bulls, using one for a sin offering to the Lord and the other for a burnt offering to make atonement for the Levites. Have the Levites stand in front of Aaron and his sons, and then present them as a wave offering to the Lord. In this way, you are to set the Levites apart from the other Israelites, and the Levites will be mine. After you have purified the Levites and presented them as a wave offering, they are to come to do their work at the tent of meeting. They are the Israelites who are to be given holy to me. I have taken them as my own in place of the firstborn, the first male offspring from every Israelite woman. Every firstborn male in Israel, whether human or animal, is mine. When I struck down all the firstborn in Egypt, I set them apart for myself, and I have taken the Levites in place of all the firstborn sons in Israel. From among all the Israelites I have given the Levites as gifts to Aaron and his sons to do the work at the tent of meeting on behalf of the Israelites and to make atonement for them so that no plague will strike the Israelites when they go near the sanctuary. Moses, Aaron, and the whole Israelite community, did with the Levites just as the Lord commanded Moses. The Levites purified themselves and washed their clothes. Then Aaron presented them as a wave offering before the Lord and made atonement for them to purify them. After that, the Levites came to do their work at the tent of meeting under the supervision of Aaron and his sons. They did with the Levites just as the Lord commanded Moses. The Lord said to Moses, this applies to the Levites. Men, twenty-five years old or more, shall come to take part in the work at the tent of meeting. But at the age of fifty they must retire from their regular service and work no longer. They may assist their brothers in performing their duties at the tent of meeting, but they themselves must not do the work. This, then, is how you are to assign the responsibilities of the Levites. Numbers 9. The Lord spoke to Moses in the desert of Sinai in the first month of the second year after they came out of Egypt. He said, Have the Israelites celebrate the Passover at the appointed time. Celebrate it at the appointed time at twilight on the fourteenth day of this month in accordance with all its rules and regulations. So Moses told the Israelites to celebrate the Passover and they did so in the desert of Sinai at twilight on the fourteenth day of the first month. The Israelites did everything just as the Lord commanded Moses. But some of them could not celebrate the Passover on that day because they were ceremonially unclean on account of a dead body. So they came to Moses and Aaron that same day and said to Moses, We have become unclean because of a dead body, but why should we be kept from presenting the Lord's offering with the other Israelites at the appointed time? Moses answered them, Wait until I find out what the Lord commands concerning you. Then the Lord said to Moses, Tell the Israelites, When any of you or your descendants are unclean because of a dead body or are away on a journey, they are still to celebrate the Lord's Passover. But they are to do it on the fourteenth day of the second month at twilight. They are to eat the lamb together with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. They must not leave any of it till morning, or break any of its bones. When they celebrate the Passover, they must follow all the regulations. 
But if anyone who is ceremonially clean and not on a journey fails to celebrate the Passover, they must be cut off from their people for not presenting the Lord's offering at the appointed time. They will bear the consequences of their sin. A foreigner residing among you is also to celebrate the Lord's Passover in accordance with its rules and regulations. You must have the same regulations for both the foreigner and the native-born. On the day the tabernacle, the tent of the covenant law, was set up, the cloud covered it. From evening till morning, the cloud above the tabernacle looked like fire. That is how it continued to be. The cloud covered it, and at night it looked like fire. Whenever the cloud lifted from above the tent, the Israelites set out. Wherever the cloud settled, the Israelites encamped. At the Lord's command, the Israelites set out, and at His command, they encamped. As long as the cloud stayed over the tabernacle, they remained in camp. When the cloud remained over the tabernacle a long time, the Israelites obeyed the Lord's order and did not set out. Sometimes the cloud was over the tabernacle only a few days. At the Lord's command, they would encamp, and then at His command, they would set out. Sometimes the cloud stayed only from evening till morning, and when it lifted in the morning, they set out, whether by day or by night. Whenever the cloud lifted, they set out. Whether the cloud stayed over the tabernacle for two days, or a month, or a year, the Israelites would remain in camp and not set out. But when it lifted, they would set out. At the Lord's command, they encamped. And at the Lord's command, they set out. They obeyed the Lord's order in accordance with His command through Moses. Numbers 10 the Lord said to Moses, Make two trumpets of hammered silver, and use them for calling the community together, and for having the camp set out. When both are sounded, the whole community is to assemble before you at the entrance to the tent of meeting. If only one is sounded, the leaders, the heads of the clans of Israel, are to assemble before you. When a trumpet blast is sounded, the tribes camping on the east are to set out. At the sounding of a second blast, the camps on the south are to set out. The blast will be the signal for setting out. To gather the assembly, blow the trumpets, but not with the signal for setting out. The sons of Aaron, the priests, are to blow the trumpets. This is to be a lasting ordinance for you and the generations to come. When you go into battle in your own land against an enemy who is oppressing you, sound a blast on the trumpets. Then you will be remembered by the Lord your God and rescued from your enemies. Also at your times of rejoicing, your appointed festivals and new moon feasts, you are to sound the trumpets over your burnt offerings and fellowship offerings, and they will be a memorial for you before your God. I am the Lord your God. On the twentieth day of the second month of the second year, the cloud lifted from above the tabernacle of the covenant law. Then the Israelites set out from the desert of Sinai and traveled from place to place until the cloud came to rest in the desert of Paran. They set out this first time at the Lord's command through Moses. The divisions of the camp of Judah went first under their standard. Nashon, son of Amminadab, was in command. Nethanel, son of Zuar, was over the division of the tribe of Issachar, and Eliab, son of Elon, was over the division of the tribe of Zebulun. Then the tabernacle was taken down, and the Gershonites and Merarites who carried it set out. The divisions of the camp of Reuben went next, under their standard. Elizer, son of Shedur, was in command. Shalumiel, son of Zerushadai, was over the division of the tribe of Simeon. And Eliasaph, son of Duel, was over the division of the tribe of Gad. Then the Kohathites set out, carrying the holy things. The tabernacle was to be set up before they arrived. The divisions of the camp of Ephraim went next, under their standard. Elishema, son of Amahud, was in command. Gamaliel, son of Pedazer, was over the division of the tribe of Manasseh. And Abidan, son of Gideoni, was over the division of the tribe of Benjamin. Finally, as the rear guard for all the units, the divisions of the camp of Dan set out under their standard. Ahiazer, son of Amishadai, was in command. Pagiel, son of Akran, was over the division of the tribe of Asher. And Ahira, son of Enan, was over the division of the tribe of Naphtali. This was the order of march for the Israelite divisions as they set out. 
Now Moses said to Hobab, son of Ruel, the Midianite, Moses' father-in-law, We are setting out for the place about which the Lord said, I will give it to you. Come with us, and we will treat you well. For the Lord has promised good things to Israel. He answered, No, I will not go. I am going back to my own land and my own people. But Moses said, Please do not leave us. You know where we should camp in the wilderness, and you can be our eyes. If you come with us, we will share with you whatever good things the Lord gives us. So they set out from the mountain of the Lord and traveled for three days. The ark of the covenant of the Lord went before them during those three days to find them a place to rest. The cloud of the Lord was over them by day when they set out from the camp. Whenever the ark set out, Moses said, Rise up, Lord. May your enemies be scattered. May your foes flee before you. Whenever it came to rest, he said, Return, Lord, to the countless thousands of Israel. When Jesus had again crossed over by boat to the other side of the lake, a large crowd gathered around him while he was by the lake. Then one of the synagogue leaders, named Jairus, came. And when he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet. He pleaded earnestly with him, My little daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and live. So Jesus went with him. A large crowd followed and pressed around him. And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for twelve years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors, and had spent all she had. Yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak, because she thought, If I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Immediately her bleeding stopped, and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. At once Jesus realized that power had gone out from him. He turned around in the crowd and asked, Who touched my clothes? You see the people crowding against you? His disciples answered. And yet you can ask, Who touched me? But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet and trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. While Jesus was still speaking, some people came from the house of Jairus, the synagogue leader. Your daughter is dead, they said. Why bother the teacher any more? Overhearing what they said, Jesus told him, Don't be afraid. Just believe. He did not let anyone follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the home of the synagogue leader, Jesus saw a commotion with people crying and wailing loudly. He went in and said to them, why all this commotion and wailing? The child is not dead, but asleep. But they laughed at him. After he put them all out, he took the child's father and mother and the disciples who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha kum, which means, Little girl, I say to you, get up. Immediately the girl stood up and began to walk around. She was twelve years old. At this they were completely astonished. He gave strict orders not to let anyone know about this, and told them to give her something to eat.